Today we celebrate the 29th Sunday in ordinary time. We welcome all, especially those who are visiting. The second collection this weekend is for recovery efforts after the recent awakenings. Please be as generous as possible. Ladies, consider register registering for a morning of reflection on Saturday, October 29th at 8.30 a.m. at St. Mary's, Good Time. Check the Diocese website to register. A special remembrance is made in this mass for Lucie Latini. Please send. Our entrance here is number 672, our Olga, our help in ages past, number 672.
Almighty ever living God, grant that we may always perform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Therefore, Moses said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle, after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hor. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired. So they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hor supported his hands one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Salvation 
through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reputation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But they did fall in love. 
And the third story I hear all the time, maybe most often, is the one that one of the partners will say, I wasn't interested in him or her at all. But they kept asking and asking and asking over and over again for a period of months, and eventually they wore me down. And I just said yes to get it over with. But then they usually go on to say that I can laugh now because I was so wrong. If I had given up, things would not have worked out the way they had. So sometimes good things just take time. And we know that. At some level, we do know that already. If you've ever tried to learn how to play a musical instrument, you know what I'm talking about. In the early stages, there's that huge temptation just to give up. Because it's not as easy as it looks. It's difficult. And then usually the sound coming out of the instrument that you're playing is pretty awful. And all that practicing dips into your free time. But if a person sticks with it, if a person keeps plugging away, eventually there is a breakthrough. One that leads someone from a negative experience to a positive one. One that takes a person from drudgery to joy. Because sometimes good things take time. So maybe it's a sport you're playing for the first time. Or maybe it's some sort of art skill that you're trying to develop. Maybe it's the first few weeks or months at a completely new job. Maybe it's an exercise regime that you've never tried before. Or maybe it's some coursework in a new area of study. And there are countless examples of things that have much better outcomes the more that we stay with them. The more that we try, the more that we persevere, the more we don't give up. So the three readings we have today are examples of this. In the first reading we have from Exodus, Moses, who is assisted by Aaron and Hur, he's doing all he can to keep that staff of God raised up as he watches the Israelites in battle. He was tired, and he didn't understand why God asked this of him, and how this would work if he could just keep that staff raised. He didn't understand it, and nor should we, but he trusted, and he listened to what God had asked him to do. And he was struggling to do it as well, to keep his on himself. But yet he did so, and the Israelites were victorious. In the second reading of St. Paul's letter to Timothy, we see Paul is encouraging Timothy in his faith. He's urging him to proclaim the word, to be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. And then in the Gospel story, from Luke, we hear the parable of the persistent widow, a story in which a woman convinces an unjust judge to render a just decision on her behalf. And this story includes an interesting and maybe more than a little puzzling detail. He describes the judge's decision as being based on the fact that she just kept on bothering him. But you have to hand it to her. She never gave up. And good things happen. Believing that good things take time, that persistence pays off, is much easier to embrace when it comes to the concrete things of everyday life. So we get that degree. We learn to play that instrument. We win the game. We paint that picture. We get the girl or the guy. So to put it another way, when it comes to certain things in life, 
we can see those fruits clearly. We can see the actual results of our persistence. And that encourages us even more. But with faith, faith really isn't like that. Because we don't necessarily see as God sees. And we don't necessarily understand as God understands. And we don't even really know exactly what caused what. We don't exactly understand how our persistence in the spiritual life is actually making a difference in our lives or the lives of others. But we pray anyway. And we give anyway. And we trust anyway. And we forgive anyway. And we hope we love anyone with a deep sense that it is the right thing to do, it is the best thing to do, and it is the only thing to do if we want to remain faithful. And maybe, and most importantly, we don't give up whether we can clearly see the fruits or not, whether we know precisely what God is trying to accomplish or not whether things turn out the way we want them or not. Those things aren't ultimately as important. Staying with it is. Staying on the path is. Staying in conversation with our loving God is. And you know what? The amazing thing is, good things will happen. It just takes Kevin now lives the best of me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only one God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us spent for our salvation. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. It proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we seek to follow Christ in the fullness of life, we turn to the Lord for our prayers and for God's holy church, may he bless her with continued growth in number and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations, may God lead those in power to adjust governance and give them the grace to discern what is the best for their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our commander-in-chief and our political and military leaders, that they may tirelessly seek peaceful settlements to international disputes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are absent from the life of the church, may the Lord encourage them in their faith and deliver them from doubt. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of worship, may God strengthen us against temptation and graciously hear our prayers for one another. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful and departed, particularly those who have no one else to pray for them, may they be welcomed into the heavenly Jerusalem. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for hearing our prayers which we offer today through Christ. Amen. Our song for preparation of the gifts is number 647, Lord of All Hopefulness, number 647. <laughs> May be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, we're with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift Amen. them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings of your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy of mortality itself. But the cause of our downfall might have become the means of our salvation for Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adore your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs 
in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us all for each other to sign our Christ. Those who are made to pay with us today are able to receive the Eucharist at this time and offer our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most holy sacrament, and I love you above all things that I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
benefiting from participation in heavenly things. We may be helped by, the good, by what you give in the present age and prepare for the gifts that are eternal through Christ's son. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael, Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be your protection against the wicked and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our session on hand is number 572, blessed by our servant number 5.